Hello, class. Let's talk about stress. So this is um, one of the last hypothalamus pituitary pathways we will talk about, and it's all about stress. I really like this pathway because um, we all live in a stressful time, and there's different things you stress about um, as a parent, um, as a student, as a teacher. So I like to learn about this pathway because it allows me to understand the physiological process that the pathway gets turned on and what is its manifestations on my body. So you see signs of those stress. You got to think back to what turned it on in the first place, and that is stress. So stress management is really trying to not let that stimulus turn on the whole pathway. Sometimes you have to really understand what you can control and what is completely out of your control. And things that are out of your control should not be turning on the pathway. And also, one thing to understand about the stress pathway is the pathway doesn't take away your stress, right? Example I like to give is that if you worry about money, turning on the stress pathway is not gonna magically grow a money tree and shake money down on you. Um, what it does is the stress generates a body's response, okay? And that creates sometimes a lot of time you're sacrificing your body for that stressor, okay? Because of the response. Um, in simple animal physiology terms, the stress pathway is for it to harness energy to deal with a short-term problem or a long-term problem. And usually those problems are solved rather quickly. So the stress in the animal kingdom doesn't bear on them like they do in modern society. So, okay, let's get to the pathway. And as you understand the pathway, hopefully you learn ways to manage your stress better. Okay, this is the big picture item on looking at stress, okay? And you can, um, Think about, I use the hospital as a situation, and it is a really stressful place um, because patients are in pain, dying, uh, have a, a difficult time eating, which creates stress. And now, of course, as a nurse or a doctor in the hospital, you have a lot of things to do. And when you go home, you have your home life as well. So I want you to think about the different kind of stress. At a short term, lasting only a few seconds to maybe at most a minute or so, or long term, lasting a lot longer than a few minutes, maybe hours, even days, even months, okay? And I want you to think about, well, how would you control each type of stress? And then make a list of all the stress in your life and um, think about what is a short term and what is a long term. Um, short term could even be like, ooh, the oven alarm is off, I better go pull the um, hot pan out of the oven, that might just be like, oh, I gotta get going type of short-term stress, lasts for a few seconds and you're done. Now that's completely uh, normal. And I also want you to think about why is stress mobilizing energy, right? So you're living in this normal thing and suddenly something comes, right? Well, you're really responding to that thing that's out of your normal homeostasis. Um, so it requires a little bit more energy than that rest state you're on. Okay, um, this slide uh, looks at a stress pathway, but it's looking at the gland that's responsible for responding to stress. And the adrenal gland, ad means above, above, renal means kidneys, so adrenal gland is these little glands that sits above your kidney. It's really about the size of your thumb. So if you curve up your thumb, it's about that size, and it's making a lot of hormones. So if you have the adrenal cortex, the all side, of the adrenal gland is making these steroid family hormones. And I briefly described what they do, but they do a lot more than just this few things. And then adrenal medulla is the middle of the gland, and that's um, making epinephrine, norepinephrine, the catecholamine family of hormones. So that's very different than steroid hormone. And adrenaline. Adrenaline is the common name, and that's for fight or flight. So I want you to, um, you know, make sure you understand those uh, histology and the hormones produced and um, really think about um, what the tissue look like comparing each of them. Okay, let's look at the pathway. So this is the overview again, and then I go through each one individually with words and my simplified drawing. Same thing here. Okay, so and then when you study these pathways, you can look at it and then go back to the overall and then you can split them off again, okay? So um, let's, um, 
I can draw a new one and side by side you can compare. So when you think about the, um, the pathways, we have a, um, we have short-term and then we have long-term pathway, okay? And, oops, can draw a straight line. All right, that's okay. Um, so the short-term pathway is, like I say, it's fight or flight, it's very short. Um, it's really actually fight or flight, um, freeze or faint, okay? So there's more reactions to that, all right? So, a stress that is short term comes in, and this could be this could be um, fire. Uh, oh, what? there's uh, someone cut me off, right? Those kind of things are short term stress. So what you have with the short term stress is that it's still being processed from the brain to the hypothalamus um, through the different emotional panic center of your body, and then that then sends information through a neuron, through your spinal cord. So it's going to run. You see the stress run down all the way through your spinal column. This is the sympathetic active part of your nervous system. System, okay? It's sympathetic ganglion. And then that's going to come and stimulate the adrenal medulla, the center of the adrenal gland. And the adrenal medulla is going to produce it's going to produce hormone. And that hormone is adrenaline, but it's also called catecholamine. Or it's also called epinephrine and norepinephrine. I'm just going to put epi, norepi, but all the names for the same hormone. And then now hormone is going to create a response to react to that stress. So if someone cuts you off, right? And you're going to hit them. The response that you're going to get is you want to garner ATP. Right? How do we get that ATP? Remember back into that first um, lecture, uh, 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 lecture on metabolism, right? So you want to make sure you have increase in oxygen and an increase in glucose okay so all that is gonna and you want to circulate this so the increase in oxygen glucose atp you're going to achieve that by pumping it around more so you're going to increase heart rate you're going to increase breathing right to bring in more oxygen And then um, you're gonna deliver, right? So this is all metabolism, breathing, blood pressure, glucose, right? And you're gonna bring all that energy into the muscle, okay? So you're gonna increase all this and then increase muscle. And brain activity increasing alertness. So now you can react and then you can then, you can become smarter and more active and you want to get out of the way or um, try to make sure that the car doesn't hit you, okay? The one thing that also is gonna happen is that these are all sympathetic activities, right? So you, the epinephrine, norepinephrine is actually gonna decrease the parasympathetic activity. And this parasympathetic activity has such things as digestion or making um, urine, your kidney, all that filtering and rebuilding, all that stuff, you're gonna stop that, okay? You're gonna you stop the rest, repair, re, you know, making uh, digestion and things like that, and you're gonna send that energy um, reacting. There is no feedback in here. When the stress is gone, the pathway is gone, okay? So um, if, some, if the person who cuts you off continue to do something, that's, then the pathway gets reactivated, okay? So it can get reactivated and send more action, but it doesn't um, feedback, 
Okay. So you do, you have moments on your life where you're stressed with the adrenaline and then you turn it off. You have moments of stress and you turn it off. But then you also understand that you have to have moments of rest to restore, give the chance for the, re the restoration. This is why um, patients who suffer PTSD and this pathway is uh, on overdrive because it got overactivated from their traumatic experience. Okay, let's look at long term. So long term is something that lasts a lot longer than a few minutes. So in long term pathway, we're going to use the HP axis because there's a lot of more modulation. Okay, so H, P. In this case, we're going to do the adrenal cortex. And these pathways, what we're looking at is in long-term stress, in the animal kingdom, this usually involves food and starvation. But in human, it's, we don't have to worry about food, right? Food is there. Not all of us, but not all, not all but some, some people do have to worry about food. But um, we have a lot of other things that we worry about too, like housing, car, your kids, your relationship, things like that. So this is long-term stress coming in. And what that long-term stress does is it's going to kick off a stimulatory pathway. Okay? It's the same thing as what we learned before. And this is going to send out CRH, corticotropin releasing hormone, from the hypothalamus binding to the pituitary gland to release ACTH. ACTH is going to bind to the adrenal cortex to release cortisol, cortisol, right? And then also sometimes we are looking at aldosterone. So these are steroid hormones, longer acting, and cortisol and aldosterone can do negative feedback, but we'll put it in there, okay? So in terms of cortisol, let's look at cortisol first. This is the main one we're going to look at, and this is also going to be more longer term getting the ATP to the body, but because it's longer term, glucose is not enough, so you're going to be... Um, you're going to be increasing the breakdown of things that you have been stored in your body. So this becomes the degradating part of cortisol, right? Your breakdown of fat, protein, and, glucose, and then the store of glucose. Glycogen. Okay, so this is all gets broken down to make ATP. Okay, so you can see what's going on here. But the long term stress cortisol also has a secondary effect, and that is the depression of the immune system, immune suppression. This is why you tend to get sick more often when you are stressed right? Or in finals week, you get more stress or you get um, stress over finals week and a cold sore breaks off, um, things like that. Um, and Or if on the prolonged stress, um, things start coming out and that's all through the immune suppression, okay? Aldosterone has a role of, uh, of increasing water and salt retention in the body. And that, in a, in this, it, together, is going to increase blood pressure. This is why people who are stressed all the time can have a higher blood pressure. So this is the pathway. Like I said, um, usually you shouldn't activate it too much. Um, but when it's overactivated because people are worried about different things, then this becomes um, the consequence of the stress. So if you don't want this pathway to turn on, because this is not going to take away some of the problem that you're stressed about. So what you have to really think of is how do I mentally, in the brain, think about your stress, okay, and decrease the consequences of turning on that pathway in the stress pathway, okay? So that there's a lot of complication that can go into here, but you can um, read um, about the stress pathway 
notes here. And then also I want you to apply it to some questions. And now I also want you to apply it to some disease, uh, long-term consequences of um, the stress pathway and then other adrenal pathologies as well. Draw it out, draw the HP axis. Okay, one of the most common syndromes is Cushing syndrome, and there's a few causes of it, esogenous or endogenous. Esogenous is due to using cortisol medicines such as pregnisone to treat inflammatory diseases such as arthritis, lupus, psoriasis, and then that can cause some unintended consequences because cortisol is used at such high amount to control, using it as an immune suppressant so that they don't um, feel the pain from these diseases, or well, lessen the pain of these diseases, and but then they have some unintended consequences. So I want you to also think about that. So what happens when you overdo this, okay? So um, that's the last of the HP pathway. Uh, I hope you learn a lot of the stress pathway, and I want you to uh, think about it, ask some questions in the discussion board, and come to my office hour, and it's, um, it's feel it's really important to understand the physiology of how the body works in order for you to know how to manage that and maintain homeostasis in your body.